All right, Turtle Boy, uh, it's been more than two months, more than two months now since uh, we've shut down the world, more than two months of the biggest news story of our lives. Uh, you know, we've, you and I have always been news junkies, but I think a lot of people have come around there following the news closely. And what we have today, what we have to announce today is we have the face, we have two faces, two faces. One is the face of the lockdown. And it is not a pretty face, I have to say. And the other one is the face of the resistance, the face of opening up the economy. And that's a familiar one. Dave Portnoy, sitting in his whatever, his apartment in New York, decided to whip out the cell phone and do a little, uh, uh, what does he call it, emergency press conference? Yeah, that was an emergency press conference. What time was that? Because it went viral like nothing he's ever done, including his fight with AOC, none, you know, stuff with Goodell. Uh, Portnoy, as as uh, as my uh, old friend Kurt Minahan would say, the smartest dumb guy in the world. I mean, he is uh, he, he he knows how to go viral, even when he's not really trying to. I mean, yes. just you least expect it. He grabs the phone, goes on a rant, wonders why we are still locked down, and suddenly he's retweeted by everyone. I checked a minute ago; it was three thirty six thousand retweets, thirty six thousand likes. You don't see 30, that very often. 38. 38,000 retweets, 114,000 likes. 114,000 likes. That's what, yeah, that's, that's what the Callahan podcast get, gets every time it goes live on Facebook. It's, yes, we are live great. on Facebook right now. And uh, all the people are live. We don't share it every morning. Yes, I'll go ahead and share it up. But, but Portnoy didn't say anything new or, or original. He just went on a rant, a good uh emotional rant wondering why we are still locked down wondering why uh they they change the goalpost every day nothing you haven't heard on this podcast nothing turtle boy hasn't written uh you hear it every day on 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 a number of shows but you know it's portnoy and he did it his way and my girl ann coulter just retweeted him as we said a moment ago before we came on that any minute now donald j trump will retweet him and then Portnoy goes to a whole new level. Trump's got 79 million followers. Donald Jr. will definitely retweet him. Oh, yeah. At the end of today, Portnoy will be the most viewed video in, in the world. And again, it's funny. It's Portnoy. It's nothing new. It's the same thing we've all been saying. What the hell are we? Why the hell are we still locked down? Yeah. I mean, okay. it's uh, Corona rant time. Whenever I do a Corona rant, half the people fucking hate me, half love me. We'll see where this one lands. What the fuck's going on? When did this become flatten the curve, flatten the curve, flatten the curve to we have to find a cure or everyone's going to die? Like Fauci. Seems like a nice enough dude. I've always been like, oh, no agenda. Looks like he could be maybe the grandfather in Wedding Crashers. Gets in front of the Senate. He's like, we reopen the country too quick. Everyone's dead. Where'd that come from? And the L.A. mayor, we're not open in the city till we find a cure. What? Find a cure? Who says we're going to find a cure? We haven't found a cure to cancer. It took AIDS 20 years or whatever. Do we even have a cure? So the economy just shut down? All we've heard forever, flatten the curve, flatten the curve, make sure this hospital beds were there. Now all of a sudden it's like a 180. This is like taking a cross-country flight, six hours. They tell you flight six hours. Five hours and a half go by. They get on the intercom like, oh, just kidding. We have another 10 hours. You can't do that. People have been mentally preparing. We're doing what you ask. We've done exactly what you said. Now you're changing the rules. And some states are open. Some close. L.A. shutting down. New York shutting down. Arizona is opening. Florida is opening. Seems along political lines. What is going on? Yeah. <clears throat> It, how long is the rant? Three and a half minutes. Oh yeah, he goes on for another. Yeah, it's, it's good, and but it's you know again you know, he's stating the obvious. It's all, along political lines. I love that like Matthew McConaughey's making the rounds, doing some interviews, and saying we can't get political. I got news for you, Matthew. It's too late. It is the most political story I've ever seen. I mean, all the the blue states, all the liberal governors, the liberal mayors, including the liberal governor of Massachusetts, are going to stay down, stay locked down as long as possible they know it hurts trump they know it makes them look compassionate and they know it makes the soccer moms suburban soccer moms feel good not the ones who are losing their homes losing their businesses those people they're they're with us you know they're they're with the the red states they're with the republicans 
the ones who have no skin in the game, the people who work for the state or the people you know, who, who teach it, you know, colleges and they get a whatever, four or five month vacation. They don't mind. Lock it down forever. Plus, it hurts Trump. That's very important. That's what Charlie Baker, Massachusetts wants to do. Hurt Trump. Um, the people, as Portner points out, in Arizona and Florida, Texas, they want to get back to work. There's a great divide. Like, you don't see, except on election day, this kind of divide. And I feel good about our side because uh, it, it, we're going we're going to be right. Turtle Boy, in six months, 10 months, whatever, two years, we're going to look back and say this was madness. What they oh, did. This madness. will go down in history as one of the great blunders of all time. Like, remember that time we intentionally tank one of the healthiest economies in American history because of a virus that specifically preyed on the elderly. And we did pretty much nothing to protect the elderly. As a matter of fact, we did the exact opposite by throwing sick patients into enclosed areas with the elderly while cutting off the civil rights of people who are healthy. First, this is the first country in human history to intentionally tank its economy. The first time, the first time that a virus led a country to quarantine the healthy, not the sick, the healthy. Uh, and and on top of that, there'll be all these in uh, unintended consequences, such as releasing prisoners who, you know, half in New York, half the prisoners have already been caught and and sent back to prison. Surprise, big surprise. I mean, it is uh, born out of this thing are so many insane policies that it's going to take years to just catch up on all the crazy things the blue state governors and the little tyrant mayors have done. But I want to get to the face Port noise now, at least for today, at least for probably a few days, if Trump retweets them, is the face of the the resistance, the face of reopening the economy, getting back to work. He's making sense. Portnoy is making a lot of sense here. But the face of the other side of the shutdown, of the indefinite lockdown. By the way, he mentioned Garcetti. When he said that, I checked. I literally went back and listened to what Garcetti said. He said exactly that. He said, quote, we'll never be open until we uh, completely open until we have a cure. And Portnoy's right. There's no cure for cancer. There's no vaccine for AIDS. There's no vaccine for malaria. Mm -hmm. they're, they're There's no vaccine for all the other coronaviruses. They, there may never be a vaccine for this. And this absolute idiot, Eric Garcia, this fool who wants to, you know, shut off the water and the power to you know, hairdressers and cigar stores that dare open up to serve their customers, that tyrant says we will not open until there's a cure. If you have people all around you, and God knows he probably has a staff of 97 hacks, do any of them tell you, yo, uh, Mayor, we might not ever have a cure. There's a good chance there will never be a vaccine, you idiot. Does that even happen? Or these people just live in this bubble. They, they go on TV and say, we're not going to open. We're going to close for the next three months. Los Angeles, over the next three months, it's going to be like 90 degrees every day. And this idiot is saying they're not going to open until we have a vaccine. You know what the funny thing is, Jerry, that Dave Portnoy pretends that he's, you know, apolitical. I don't do right. politics. There is no way in this day and age you can be like a normal rational person and not be conservative because they literally the, the opposite party is for in favor of shutting the world down that's right. freaking insane and he's a normal human being he's got a business to run stuff like that and how i mean how can you not be it's i don't understand how this has become a right left issue there's no liberals that kind of think like you know maybe we should not stop the world this is not the greatest idea ever uh but they've all bought into it nothing surprising well, I, I, I retweeted this uh letter Somebody sent to me on Twitter about the atmosphere in Washington and how all the Democrats are reveling in this and literally hoping, you know, admitting they want it to go on as long as it takes. I mean, when you hear them say, you know, we're going to go through the next three months, we're going to wait for the summer, uh, we're going to cancel school in the fall, which the California university system has yeah. already done. They've canceled school in the fall. Alabama no team with USC. One goal in mind, and you see, yeah. USC is not even a state school. But think of this: if they start seeing Trump's numbers go down, if Biden comes out of the basement and, and is you know coherent, which is a big if, they're going to say, "Why stop now? Let's keep this going." Their goal is to is, is regime change in November, and they're not going to let up until that happens. I mean, you can't see; you're never going to see 
one of these blue state idiots like Tom Wolf in Pennsylvania or Charlie Parker in Massachusetts say, you know, the president was right. We got to get back to work. We got to take, you know, Americans take risks. That what that's what we do. And Portnoy said what I've was said a few weeks ago. What's been said a million times is if you gave a small business person a choice, someone like Turtle Boy, you know, has a small business. His life depends on it. his family. His kids depend on it. You're in your 30s. You have a choice. You lose your business or you get the virus and keep your business. You're taking the virus, right? Absolutely. I'm not scared of the virus. Not that I'm like a tough guy. I just look at the numbers. It's like that if you get, I probably had it. And, and odds are like half the people listening right now, you've had it and you didn't know it because it's a weak pussy disease. It does not kill people who are healthy and, you know, it preys on the elderly, the sick, the morbidly obese. There's nothing to be afraid of with coronavirus. Of course not. And But here's what amazes me, and, and you probably have this experience too. Every time I tweet something like this, I tweet about, I criticize Charlie Baker, who is determined to just to, to just crush the will of every small business person in Massachusetts, never giving them any hope, any light at the end of the tunnel. He says, we're going to talk Monday about reopening some uh, some phases, some parts of Massachusetts, but he won't say which. He leaves everybody hanging. It's the most. What a dickhead. What oh. a dickhead to do something like that. Like, well, that we're, just open Monday. we're just not. I'll tell you on Monday who gets to open. Like what, a, what kind of dickhead does something like that? And you do this too. I, you, I, mean, I talk to my friends. I got a friend that owns a couple of hair salons. I got obviously my, my best friend's a paver my brother-in-law's in, in concrete and all these other small business people. And they are literally hanging there saying, what happens Monday? Tell me. There are people who own small businesses, whatever they are, hair salons, who are trying every day to convince their employees not to bail on them, you know, not to just give up going on employment, not to take another job, not to go work at Amazon or, or Lowe's. Every day they're saying it's going to happen any soon. And this, this, this fool, Charlie Baker, this absolute uh, embarrassment. Baker sits there and says, I'm not going to tell you. He doesn't give a shit about these small business people. It is amazing. He still puts an R next to his name, but he could care less, could not care less about small businesses. He lives for two things. He lives for his approval rating, which is good because these soccer moms and uh, hiding in their basement in the suburbs think he's protecting them. And he lives for the you know approval of the Boston Globe and Linda Pizzuti, and she loves him so far. So he feels fine, even though thousands of businesses are going under. We'll get to that because it is frustrating as hell. I tweet about Baker, and I get so many responses saying, "You still, even today, saying you want people to die. Baker's saving lives. And I'll, and I'll occasionally tweet back at him and say, how the hell is he saving lives? And say, well, as long as we wait. Yesterday was a big guy went after me on Twitter and said, we just have to wait for the uh, the peak, the climax of this virus to pass. Then we'll be fine. Just totally ill-informed, idiotic, uh, yeah. you know ignorant. Jerry, you, know who, you know who doesn't socially distance? Charlie Baker's son. Whatever happened to that story? <laughs> it was buried. Charlie Baker's son who uh, had his, uh, I, I don't know, what, what are you going to say, uh, molested a uh, fellow a passenger on a plane. A gropey, yeah. A little bit. Yeah, a little gropy, little gropy kid. That that got buried, but that yeah. was, uh, you know, that's that's what the state police. I don't, uh, I don't really get, like. I don't give a shit, and obviously, you guys don't give a shit about the the commenters who are, you know, just giving their opinion based on emotion, right? I give a shit about the elected officials who are basically making decisions based on emotion versus data. Right. Well, I agree, and, and, I, and, I, and I'm still amazed. Eight, we, uh, nine weeks later. That people are still that stupid that I think they think Baker halting, you know, construction is helping, is helping, you know, slow the virus. People are still that ill informed. I guess they're watching whatever cartoons, they're watching The Office, they're not reading up, they're not paying attention. They still think like if you go out for a run, you have to wear a mask. It's just idiotic. We are learning. If you're paying attention, we are learning that we are being uh, governed by absolute morons. These mayors, these governors, I mean, again, Cuomo was, you know, this soap opera star at the beginning. People were like throwing their panties at him at press conferences. We are learning that Cuomo is an absolute moron who's not fit, forget governing a state. He's not fit to run a freaking hot dog stand. He's incompetent. He killed, killed thousands of elderly New Yorkers, which brings me to the face, the new face, 
It was Cuomo. Right he's, he's not as handsome as he thinks he is, but he's he's not hideous. I'll tell you who is hideous. The new face of the lockdown. Her name is uh, Rachel Levine. We now we learned this morning, formerly of uh, Massachusetts, formerly of uh, Wakefield and Cambridge, went to Harvard, of course. She's the Secretary of Health in Pennsylvania. You may have seen her. She's on camera uh, occasionally, you know, one of these uh, crazy, tyrannical, liberal, lockdown liberals that never, you know, wants to uh, arrest people who dare to, you know, what, open their hair salon or, uh, you know, open their bar. I mean, she's threatening people. There are, there are huge swaths of Pennsylvania, by the way, who have, that have no uh, coronavirus patients, no outbreak, no incidents, none have no deaths, no cases, huge swaths of suburban Pennsylvania. Their governor, this Tom Wolf, is worse than ours. Their governor is worse than Cuomo. He literally says, if you if you dare open against my wishes, you're a coward. You are giving in to the virus. If you don't lock down, hide in your basement, you are a coward. He says this. He's just the most repulsive of all the governors. And then there's his uh, health secretary, Rachel Levine. Rachel is um, a transgendered individual. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Used to be named Richard, I believe. Um, and uh, she is making decisions, life and death decisions for people in Pennsylvania. She made one de decision, which broke, which we learned about uh, two days ago. Um, they were preparing to put coronavirus patients in nursing homes in Pennsylvania just like they did in New York, New Jersey. Um, I think we'll find out they did it in Massachusetts. I think, obviously, somebody did it at the soldier's home in Holyoke, killing 70-something now. The death toll is rising. Uh, heroes, World War II vets, Vietnam vets. That's on Charlie Baker. But in Pennsylvania, this woman, uh, Rachel Levine, she knew they were going to do this. She knew they were putting in... Uh, coronavirus patients into nursing homes. So what did she do? She got her mom out of there. She snuck her mom out of the dark of the night and put her in a hotel. Now, let me ask you this, you guys. What do you think if this were, I don't know, Republican, just kind of a mean-looking old Republican, Richard Burr. If this was rich, someone who looked like Richard Burr, who yanked his mother, his 95-year-old mother, out of the nursing home before they... Uh, um, transferred the infected patients into that nursing home, what would happen? There would be national outrage. They, they were mad because they sold facts before this happened, you know? They, they literally, they I mean, remember Kelly Loeffler and a couple other senators got caught, even Diane Feinstein. Yeah. They sold stocks based on inside information that they had about the, so that's just them profiting. This is this woman literally Saving, saying her mother's life is more important than everybody, all the other elderly people in the state. No, what she's doing is admitting what they're doing is going to cost lives. She knows it. She can't say, and I heard her explanation. She said, well, we tested all the, the nurses and all the aides and we quarantined this. But she's lying. Obviously, she's lying. She's a repulsive human being. I don't care what her gender is. This is a vile human being. Knowing what they're doing, the measures they're taking is going to kill elderly Pennsylvanians. And I just checked the number. It's over 2,600 people, 2,600 in nursing homes in Pennsylvania, dead because of this woman and this governor who decided to send coronavirus uh, positive patients into nursing homes. Um, I'm looking at the total. They have total deaths, 3,900. Nursing home deaths, 2,600. So a large majority of the deaths were in nursing homes because of incompetence of this woman, Rachel Levine. Used to be Richard Levine. Is that the name that he Richard grew up Levine, in? Correct. Now is yes. Rachel Levine. Snuck her mother out, 95-year-old mother, put her in a hotel, and then sat back and watched the carnage as they were you know, dragging dead bodies out of all these nursing homes. I wonder... You think she feels good today because mom's a okay. Mom's waking up today, having her breakfast, feeling good because she saved her. She saved her mother's life and let all these other people die. If that's not uh, malfeasance, I mean that should be criminal. If you're not, in, if you're in Pennsylvania and you're demanding this woman's head on a stick, you are just not paying attention.
Let's, yeah, let's, hear, from, let's hear from the lovely mother, Rachel Levine. Protected. My mother requested, and my sister and I, as her children, comply to move her to another location during the COVID-19 outbreak. My mother is 95 years old. She is very intelligent and more than competent to make her own decisions. That, that is amazing. So this lying scumbag says her 95-year-old mother just woke up one day and said, I don't want to be in this nursing home anymore. I want to move to a hotel. Can you see if you can find out what hotel? I'd love to know. I'd love to know too, yeah. Uh, what hotel? Now, first of all, why would any 95-year-old person do that? Be generally, when you're in a nursing home, you're kind of settled. You know, you're stuffed. You have all those pictures on the dresser of all your grandkids. You have those little doilies on the nightstands. You know, you got your knitting kit over here, and you stuff your clothes in the drawers. You know what time they're eating. You know what time they're playing Mahjong. You know, you know what time they're playing a movie, you know, four o'clock, they, they put on, you know, Casablanca. It's you're there. You're comfortable. That's your home. What a lion piece of garbage. This is that, that is the most blatant lie I've heard. Not told by Adam Schiff in a long time. When you think about it, David Spade, <laughs> I wasn't David Spade. When I heard that, it is, if you haven't seen the picture, uh, <laughs> she's, I don't know how long she's been a woman, probably many years, but, uh, she is, uh, she's, uh, not, uh, not exactly a t attractive young woman anymore. Brave and beautiful. Let's just state it. Yes, that. inside she's probably beautiful. But here's, I was going to ask you this: the what what is so far in your mind in twenty in in the last nine weeks, what is the ultimate twenty twenty story? Like people have said on Twitter, that is so twenty twenty, just bizarre story. Uh, in this season of insanity, in this pandemic year of pandemic, pandemic year, just crazy, crazy story. I would say this on the day most people learned that this woman, Rachel Levine, doomed thousands of Pennsylvanians to your to their death while sneaking her mother out of the nursing home. The big story in Pennsylvania. Kind of like it would be here, you know. You know the media; it's not a lot different there. It's, Everybody wants to see the picture, Dave. Can we get a picture? Nobody's want, want a picture. picture or put up yeah, a video of her. Yeah, Rachel Levine. Think about this, Turtle Blue. The big story, and you can Google it. Google Rachel Levine, and I tell you what'll pop up first. I believe will it be will it be twenty six hundred dead? Will it be you know her mom staying at the uh, you know Best Western down the street ordering room service breakfast right now? It will not be. The big story is a radio host named Marty Griffin in Pennsylvania, get ready for it, misgendered this tyrant, misgendered this monster. The story is not, the big story is not the 2,600 dead, probably many of them, you know, uh, veterans and heroes and just great people. They're all dead because of this woman and this governor. But the big scandal is a guy in Pennsylvania radio guy called Rachel Levine. Ready, sir, sir. There's, there's, there she is. There, don't get, get your gender. Right. We can't misgender people who, uh, you know, murder. <laughs> oh, there she is. We got a picture up. If you're not on uh, Facebook, we got a picture, and that's a good one, Dave, because that's the governor behind her, Tom Wolf. This arrogant, pompous puke who makes no apologies. You know, old people dying by the thousands because of their incompetence uh, of, of these two. And, and this monster is upset, is upset because someone called her sir. Now, I, I think I know what's going to happen now. He, his, Marty Griffin has already apologized, probably apologized a hundred times over. You think that's a mistake. It probably is, but I, I know why he did it, because his boss made him do it, said you have to do it. The mayor of Pittsburgh was ready to do an interview with that radio station, canceled yep. in protest. Canceled. Yep. canceled in protest because this woman killed 2,600 old people? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Forget that. That's another story. That's that. It happens everywhere. It happens everywhere. Thousands of people are dying. This is the big story. A radio host called that person that monster, that killer, sir. That's the big story in Pennsylvania today. Oh, my. I mean, that's ultimately what is going to save Dr. Rachel Levine. Good it's point. in fact what she claims.
holds her back, and that is her transgender identity. She'll always be able to have that to hide behind when she kills, you know, a couple thousand old people here or there, give or take. Uh, she'll always just be able to retreat to say, well, you're coming after me because I'm a member of this protected class, which is just straight out of their playbook. It never fails. They might as well do it. Now, here's the thing, Jerry, what people will ask. Uh, they'll point to places like, you know, Mass Maryland, Massachusetts. These have, quote unquote, Republican governors. Why would they intentionally tank their own economies if they're trying to win re-election? Well, because they it shows they care. You know, they about, care. Like the governor of Ohio, I've heard, he's a Republican. He's got extremely high ratings he's, and he's been kind of a man. shutdown guy, I'm told. He's a shutdown guy. DeWine, Ween, yeah, whatever. Yeah. He's a shutdown guy. Just like Baker. You know, Baker is a never Trumper in Massachusetts. He's a never Trumper. He does not want to be on the same page as Trump. He does not want to appear insensitive. I mean, he wakes up in the morning. His goal is to show everyone he cares. That's why he cries on cue. You've seen it. You've written about it. He weeps, you know, like he's like he's Brian Stellar on cue. Says he thinks about somebody dying in, in you know the soldiers' home in Holyoke. He starts crying, and you know how it works. The suburban soccer mom in Wellesley says he really cares about me, and she forgets that he's a Republican, which I do too, and she supports him. I went over this last week. It's heartbreaking. He has an eighty-five percent approval rating. He's done a horrendous job, a horrendous job in this state. Again, all the uh, small business people and all the people waiting to go back to work don't even know. What's going to happen on Monday? He said, we'll let you know. You, you can't prepare. I mean, if you own a restaurant, if you own a barbershop, you can't prepare. You can't make sure your employees are ready to go. You, you got a lot to do, man. You got to disinfect and wear masks and have all these take temperatures. And Baker will not even give you a hint. It's 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 just so offensive. This guy is the worst. I shouldn't say the worst because he's not uh, Rachel Levine or Tom Wolf or Andrew Cuomo. He's a, he's a minor leaguer compared to those tyrants, but they don't give a shit about the people whose lives are hanging in the balance. You know, they, yeah. they're surrounded that those Levine Wolf surrounded by people who are completely comfortable. Not only are they still getting a paycheck, but they have very little work to do. It's like summer's coming. It's like summer started early. What's the big deal? Watch TV, take a walk, go to the beach. You know, it's, it might be against the rules, but, you know, the rules are not for us. The rules are for the other, the little people. And they're making it very clear that they have the, the plan now. And shame on us, Jerry. Shame on all of us for not seeing this. It was so obvious that we trusted these people that their plan was not to win the election in November. That's when this ends. It's very clear at this point. They've canceled the entire summer in Boston. Everything's canceled, including the gay pride parade, which seems kind of homophobic, if you ask me. Uh, but they, they've canceled everything. Uh, it, California pretty much wants to cancel the fall already. They're, they're yep, they canceled the fall. Already. So that would be what Cal Berkeley's not going to have a football team this year. UCLA is that a state school? Are they going to? Uh, is I mean Stanford's a private school. Are they going to play football? But no, you can't. That's against the law. You're right. Even though USC and Stanford are private, they can't do it because you know having a big gathering is against the law. Yeah. I mean, you you Garcetti literally said we're going to stay locked down for the next three months. Well, locally, Harvard Med School just said all new students are going to be digital only. They're all going to be online. R returning students, only some portions of the campus will be open. When, when in doubt, you know, when in doubt, Turtle Boy, it's what hurts Trump the most. They, they're looking at their candidate. He's feeble. He's pathetic. Yep. They don't feel good about him. They're looking at Trump saying, if this reopening works, and so far it has, it's been 23 days in Georgia. Atlantic Magazine said what Georgia was doing three weeks ago was an experiment in human sacrifice. Yeah. It's been 23 days and they, there's no great wave of, of death and destruction in, in Georgia in, in Florida. Things couldn't be going better. It's amazing. They shut down their nursing homes. They, they quarantined the sick and the vulnerable the way you're supposed to. Uh, and, and, and uh, DeSantis is now offering, all these pro sports, baseball, football, bat, come to Florida. We'll accommodate you. If other states won't allow you to play, we will. He wants to have all. He just said this morning, I saw him on Fox and Friends this morning. He said, the University of Florida, their stadium is big and it's nice and it's ready for you to use every Sunday if you want to have an NFL game. So he's willing to host NFL games. 
And I heard uh, people keep saying no fans, no fans, like the Joe Buck thing. Joe Buck is saying they're going to pump in crowd noise because they're not going to have fans. He's wrong. He's wrong. You you can't tell me Goodell wouldn't allow whatever, 10, 15, 20,000 people in a stadium and just tell everyone, hey, they're they're keeping their distance. They're being safe. They're very well. Play in front of empty stadiums. No way. No way. I mean, it would kill. It'd be so. The NFL. NFL wouldn't be the same with an empty. You need people there. You need. You don't have to. I mean, if you have a big stadium, can't you have? Yeah, you get fifty thousand. No problem. You can see people five seats apart. No problem. Right. So you got. They're not going to do it. I'm sure people will. Good luck enforcing that for Gillette's security. That's another thing. But because people aren't going to obey anything, people are going to be near each other. You go out. You know, I drive around Worcester, and you know, there's this lot. Nobody's wearing a mask. Like you go through Maine South, nobody's wearing a mask. Nobody's doing it. You, it's impossible to enforce. It's a stupid law. The only know who's doing it, Jerry, soccer moms in Wellesley that are taking their well, dogs. I'm Boston, to- and they're doing it. They are doing it, man. I was out yesterday, and almost everybody. I'm getting the look. I'm getting the stink eye because I'm not doing it, especially outside. I mean, you got to be kidding me. It's stupid. But people don't ask why. They just say, tell me what to do, Mr. Mayor. They don't ask, is my mayor really, you know, Smart? Is he on top of this? Does he make sense? Yeah. They don't care. You want me to, I'll do, I'll, they just want to be told what to do. I'm going to do a Worcester bone ride today. I'm going to drive around Worcester. I'm going to take pictures of people in the natural element. I'm going to see how many people are wearing the mask. We'll see what happens. I don't think it's going to be that many. We Probably not. But in other places, you're right. In the suburbs, they're doing it. They're, they're shaming those who don't do it. You had the great blog about the the NPR guy. What's his name? Henry Santoro Henry, yelling at three. Social media down. Big tough guy. That, that was a great blog. If you haven't read it, he's an, this old guy, he's an NPR guy, and he was yelling at a family of four, including a three- and a five-year-old. He's been around. Him. He's been around forever, by the way. FNX guy, morning show guy. He's, never even heard of him. Never heard of him. Really? I, mean, I, I never heard of any of these NPR he's leeches. A nice salary to live in South Brooklyn. Though. You didn't. You didn't walk into the program directors' meeting in in the the EEI days and say like, "What's WFNX doing in Morning Drive against us?" No, right? they weren't a no. factor. And, and PBS doesn't even count NPR. They're all just a bunch of welfare it's kings scary. and queens. Some of the comments are saying that like, because you live in Ritzy. I mean, you're you're a Charlestown guy. You see the North End, maybe the Back Bay. You're not in Roxbury. Are you? They're not wearing Max in Roxbury. Oh, I'm not saying they are. You know yeah. who lives? You know who's there all the time? It's Alex Reamer. Reamer. That's Reamer's hood. That's true. Uh, that's you're true. right. I mean, right. You, you've talked about it. They're in the you know in the hood. They're not respecting these rules. You've seen the pictures. Ooh, there are parties. There are gatherings. They they're like they're, they're ahead of the curve. They're not <laughs> taking this <laughs> seriously. Yeah. Like, they, so what if I get it? I'll be better in two weeks and, and I'll be immune. I mean, they didn't, they didn't need to watch Plandemic in Roxbury to decide not to wear the masks. Right. And they if, did that you're, if you're not obese, if you're not old, you, you don't have to. And the idea that you should wear it outside, they came up with new rules in LA. And, uh, you know, obviously the mayor said we're going to stay shut down for three months, which is madness. But they came up with the beach rules. Did you see these yesterday? Rules at the beach? I did not. I about the. Uh, Oh, you can't say you're allowed to swim, right? And you're allowed to run and walk, but you can't stand still. You can't sit down and you have to wear a mask. So people in LA, if they're going to follow the rules, have to swim with masks on, not face masks like scuba masks. You think you're going to do that, Jerry? That doesn't seem safe to me. That doesn't seem like a And when you get out of the water, there is no loitering allowed. You got to immediately start running somewhere. It doesn't matter where. You have to move. Just run in place. Even if you stood there or sat there, that there was some danger. Can you stay? Can I you run in place? Is that allowed? <laughs> hey, maybe maybe that's a good thing because we haven't started that public health initiative that we should have started during this process. So maybe that's the start of this whole thing. Sure, I, I, feel, I have a two-year-old, right? And according to the law, he has to wear it out. No. I, the thought of me putting a mask on this child and him ha- somehow consenting to it. Have they ever met a two-year-old boy? Like, are they insane? Do they think? I, I think it, it is funny. I want to, I'm not that yet. I want to uh, uh, give the look, give the, the scold those parents that have their four and five-year-olds with masks because they're idiots. I think we're learning a lot through this. Let's be honest. Lessons that were made for the rest of our lives and beyond. A, our elected leaders are freaking morons. They're just dumb. They're just ignorant. They don't care about the science. They don't care about the facts. They care about power. And they love showing up every day and flexing their muscles and making people do something that makes no sense. We're learning that without a doubt. And we're learning that they're, you know, the 
these people, some people don't mind living in a police state. They don't mind being told what to do. It doesn't have to make sense. They don't mind. They're like, whatever you say, I'll do. Curfew, I'm in. What? What do you need a curfew for? What does a curfew have to do with a virus? doesn't matter. Just tell me to do it. I'll do it. I don't know if that holds true forever, but it's still nine weeks in around where I am, man, in the city. There are so many people that are. I, I was walking my dog yesterday, and a guy's running towards me. And he has no mask because he's running. And I think, well, this is a normal guy. He grabs his shirt, holds it up over his face just to go by me like this. And I'm going, what do you think is going to happen, you absolute idiot? I mean, that's how you're going to go through life, holding a shirt over your face because you're afraid a little virus will fall through the air. And he was probably 25 years old. He was a young guy, fit guy. I'm thinking, he was, he was doing that to protect you, Jerry. It wasn't the other way you around. You think it was positive? Whatever. He was, he was protected. I, I, you know, I'm, I'll say this. There are people like Turtle Boy and Portnoy who say, give me the virus. I don't want to lose my job. I don't want to lose my business. Just get this over with. I got a good friend, owns a business, and he's you know a little overweight, and he's like my age. And he's like, I don't care. I'd take the virus right now over what they're doing to my business. I've told you this before. He's a contractor. He has 25 jobs in the city of Boston that are on hold. They're just waiting. He's got people who work for him who say, I'm going to collect unemployment, call me the end of July, you know, this is crazy, why, why should I work when I can make more sitting on my ass? This is the rule, this is Democrat, you know, mentality, stay home. And he has to beg people to come back and work for him, you know, when he's finally allowed to go back to work, because they're making, they're doing so well not working. The two, the faces of this resistance beyond Portnoy today, who kind of stole everyone's thunder, we know Shelley Luther, that's a fine face, by the way. Unlike Rachel Levine, that's a fine face. Rick Savage, the, the restaurant owner in Maine. Oh, yeah, okay. Hero, who, by the way, Janet Mills, the governor, if you saw this on Tucker last night, the governor is going after him and trying to ruin him. They want to put him out of business because he dared defy the, the, the queen up there. Uh, and this New Jersey gym owner, who's opening today, I believe, against the rules, he's going to get arrested. He says, fine, they're almost like they're, you know, they're uh, uh, these around these these heroes leading the, the the fight around the country in different places. And I think on Monday you're going to be you're going to see some in Massachusetts. The governor's going to say you can't go to work, you can't open your business, and there'll be some whatever. I don't know if it'll be a salon owner or a restaurant owner or a gym owner, but there'll be some. Turtle boy, you'll be writing about it. They're going to say, "F you, Charlie Baker." They're going to get shut down. Baker will be as vindictive as the, the governor in Maine. He'll try to ruin them. He will uh, look at them as, you know, like uh, disrespecting him, and he'll try to crush them. It's going to get nasty. It's going to get nasty everywhere, by the way. That's the only natural, inevitable outcome. You know that these governors are never going to give an inch. They love them. these mayors. You're going to have to have this civil disobedience, and I'm going to sit there, and I'm going to enjoy it, and I'm going to applaud it. Well, you know what? Some restaurant owners in Boston are writing letters. I think it was to Charlie or to uh, Marty. I forget who that they want to rip it. I mean, they've, they've had enough of this. They they need this is their, how long we were told two weeks. We did our job and they feel lied to, you know, right, two weeks, it's nine are, weeks now. There are, we, you know, I had, uh, I think, uh, state rep Mark Lombardo and a couple other people were uh, pushing to reopen Massachusetts and they're Republicans and they should have the ear of the governor. He's he's hanging on for us, by the way. He's uh, hanging on to whatever you want. State rep Mark Lombardo, who is a. Uh, is a rebel if ever there was one. He's in Massachusetts and he's taken on the establishment every day when he shows up. Unfortunately, he's got to take on the governor, a former Republican turned absolute uh, dark red, uh, dark blue liberal who is uh, as, as anti-business as any governor in the country who is determined, by the way, I think I think uh, Charlie's goal, our governor's goal, is to be the last state to open up. He wants to be the last state. He does not want to uh, appear like he's following, you know, Trump's lead or following the Republicans' lead at all. Uh, but we'll we'll check in with Mark. He pays closer attention to this than we do. What's happening, Mark Lombardo? Hey, Jerry. Good talking with you. Uh, you, you know, we're 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 battling out here. You know, tell us what's going to happen Monday. Marty won't tell us. Marty says May May eighteenth. He'll let you know, and I know you know a number of small business people who are hanging on 
they don't know if they are supposed to hire people that day or, you know, bring them into work that day. They're not snow. They don't know if they'll get to open their business. He just won't tell them. What is that? What is the point of that? And what is going to happen on Monday? Well, I can tell you the legislature doesn't know either because we're not being told anything, uh, not even the, the Republican caucus. Uh, what we know is that uh, yesterday the governor says he doesn't want any leaks, um, which I found pretty a disheartening position because no one's asking for leaks. We're asking for clarity, right? Businesses want to know, can I open? If not, you know, how long? And if I can't open, can you give me some prep so I can do what you're asking me to do, whatever that might be? Um, I could only guess that we're going to see an extension beyond May 18th um, of because, you know, I, I would guess June 1st. Uh, I'm hearing rumblings of stage one, phase one, whatever the, the color coded chart that was released. I think that it was, was orange. Green. No, it was uh, a light green. It was kind of a pastel green. I, that's yeah. what I think Monday is. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think uh, I'm not convinced that that's going to happen on the 18th. So it, it may. And I hope it I hope we start kicking things off. Um, but. I don't think there's any guarantee with the approach that's been happening has been slow, slow, slow. Well, what's the point, the objective of keeping everyone hanging? I, I haven't seen that in other states where the uh, the governor is so you know nebulous and just mysterious. We'll let you know. We don't want to give any hints. And I said earlier, Mark, I got a friend who owns a couple of hair salons. He is so frustrated right now because he doesn't know if he's supposed to bring his help back, his people back next week or not he doesn't know whether he's supposed to hire them back he how, how could he know there's no hint to what's whether his business will be included in the next phase yeah i i think that's the problem is is nobody knows i, I don't know what the governor is waiting for as to why he can't start to prep businesses but jerry i also have a neighbor who's a who owns a hair salon and she, you know she, she would love to have the courage of that the salon business owner in texas had of opening her business uh, but what she's worried about is that you know unlike the governor of texas that you know basically made sure that that woman didn't ser serve time in jail she worried that massachusetts will pour licenses and, and forever kill her ability to have a profession right i mean the Isn't difference between massachusetts and texas isn't that where you as her state representative could be her advocate and have a bigger voice? Well, there's no doubt about that. would certainly have, have her voice. Um, uh, you know, she has to have a, a certain level of comfort that she's taking some risk opening up, but you know, I've encouraged her to, to get ready to be open. Um, there is a pent up desire for people in the Commonwealth to get out there for people to get to work for businesses to open. What I did find a little disheartening yesterday at the governor's press conference was uh, his comments about, Opening up Massachusetts uh, would be irresponsible now. Um, right. And I don't think anyone's asking to flip the switch and go back to what we were doing pre-COVID on day one. Um, but what I don't think is irresponsible is having multiple industries open with, you know, masks and gloves and, you know, we can figure this out, right? Where the business people, the small business people in Massachusetts are pretty bright. They'll find a way to do it yeah. safely we can open up multiple industries. We don't have to have government picking winners and losers uh, and acting, you know, as, as the king deeming who's uh, able to open up. Right. It's it's incredible that people support liberal support Baker uh, essentially picking winners, which are uh, Amazon and Lowe's and Home Depot and Walmart and Target. And losers are your small business people, your neighborhood, you know, small hardware store. They're the losers. The winners, Walmart, and and liberals are okay with that. It is amazing. He said when when he was asked that, Mark, it was a chance to give the small businesses a little hope, just a little glimmer of hope. And he said, no, opening up would be irresponsible. It's going to be slow. It's going to be painful. He's enjoying this. I swear to God, he's enjoying this because as you know, the, the globe likes him now and the people, you know, the, 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 the educator, Harvard people like him now, they applaud him. Oh, he's not like the others. He's not like, like Trump and DeSantis and Abbott. He, he's careful. He cares. And if you weren't sure, occasionally a, a tear will come down his cheek and he'll show you how much he cares. I mean, Baker is just an embarrassment. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if he's necessarily enjoying the shutdown, but what yeah, I, I is he don't agree. Power is he enjoying his new power, his new duties and responsibilities? Because I think he is. I mean, he does a press conference every day. Every day, he's got a little, you know, he's aroused at the thought of everyone listening to him and waiting for him to allow them to go back to work. Well, one of the things I don't understand is if you look at the uh, makeup of the reopening committee, 
Um, there was uh, 15 appointments to that committee. 13 of them were Democrats. Two of them were uh, unaffiliated, unenrolled individuals. Not a single Republican was apparently qualified to serve on the reopening committee. Who's on it? Well, I, I love highlighting uh, Mayor uh, Dan Rivera of Lawrence, the uh, yeah. fentanyl capital of the, the Northeast, who sits on the reopening committee. Uh, he announced that he's going to have uh, masks uh, squads out there yeah. enforcing. So I wish he would send fentanyl squads out in his city so so they could stop the drug flow from Lawrence into my community, into all the communities uh, up and down the Northeast of the United States. Uh, but that's who the governor is listening to on his reopening committee. Um, I, you know, Dan Rivera can't manage his city, never mind managing all the business owners of, of the It's a sanctuary city. It, they, they, they're they're going to enforce non-existent mask laws there, but not actual existent federal immigration laws. Yeah, so, exactly. All the drug dealers must wear masks or they're in trouble. Uh, here's, and here, I don't believe there's no Republicans. I don't believe there's any small business people on there either, Mark. I think it's all, you know, hacks and bureaucrats and big business people. He, he doesn't care. I mean, there's no evidence that he gives a damn about any small business people. Yeah, the makeup is definitely shaded towards uh, large businesses. Uh, and it's almost like small businesses need to go kiss the ring of the, uh, of the uh, larger group here. I mean, I, you know, I, I like to mention a guy named uh, Rick Green. So here's a guy who is uh, out of Pepperell, out of his garage, built a, a multi-million dollar uh, car park business, A1 Auto. Uh, he happens to be a Republican. He's very well respected. Um, he's known by the governor and his team. They, they didn't even tap this guy. I mean, this guy is the ultimate success story of, uh, of the American dream. And he's a small town, you know, Pepperell kid. No, nope, not even taps. I mean, maybe like if you're receiving a steady paycheck, you can't be on the committee. Period. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, listen. I, I think what we've done here is uh, in Massachusetts is you know in, in an effort to flatten the curve, we have driven other curbs through the roof, uh, including unemployment, bankruptcies, suicides, overdoses. So, so there's other curves that now need to be flattened, um, but yet we're not listening to you know the 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 business part of things, uh, how to get people back to work so they can feed their families. Uh, and we're really stuck on nothing but the health officials. Who's, listen, they're, they're, the health officials' job is to focus just on health. So I appreciate their perspective. As, as a government, though, you're supposed to now find the balance. And I don't think the opening uh, businesses up safely and protecting public health are mutually exclusive things. Um, if you look at the death rates, I'm sure you guys have been checking out the state rates. You know, 95% of all deaths have been from from uh, people 60 and above. 85% have been 70 and above. Um, so it's certainly uh, an older population uh, that uh, that needs to take extra caution. But 60% of all Massachusetts deaths were in nursing homes or long-term care facilities, right? So look, we can get the public back out safely, wear our masks, do our social distancing, whatever it might be, but we can open businesses at the same time. Right. Well, the thing that um, Baker takes advantage of is the ignorance. You know, he'll sit there and, and, and cry and say, we have to keep people safe when we know how to do that now. We know how to quarantine the sick, the vulnerable, protect them. Unlike nine weeks ago, we know how to do it. There is no reason. Again, a construction company can't go back to work and, and, and build a house or a painter or a roofer can go back to work. Of course they can. He just doesn't want to give them permission because he wants everyone to know how careful and compassionate he is. It is maddening. I, I think it's time, Mark, that they get the R away from his name, make him an independent or, or a Democrat, whatever. He's not a Republican. He doesn't care about small business people. He doesn't care about unemployed. There's a million unemployed now. A million. I mean, yeah. if, if that doesn't wake you up and say, we, it's time. We got to get back to work. I'll tell you what. Your neighbor might not want to be Shelley Luther. But somebody will. Turtle will be writing about it on Monday. There might be dozens, if not hundreds, of people saying, screw it. I'm opening up. Do to me what you want. I have a family to feed, just like the the, the guy, the set, uh, guy, the restaurant guy in Maine, in Bethel, Maine, just like Shelly Luther, just like the gym guy in, in, in New Jersey. There's going to be this uprising. They're tired of it. And you know what? They know it's not dangerous. That If, if they do everything right, if they don't, if there's no 75 year old obese people coming into their place of employment, they, they, they're fine. They're fine. They know how to do it now. Everyone understands how to do it. They don't need Charlie Baker anymore. They don't need the have mayor you seen, to tell them what to do. The they know what to do. Yeah. 
Dan Rivera is one to talk. He should be quarantined for many years to come, quite frankly. He's at risk. I can understand him not want to come out, but what about everybody else? That is yeah, amazing. Well, Are you sure Dan Rivera's on that task force? Because that oh, is. Uh, I'm a hundred percent sure. Oh it is. I mean, it just screams to, to the challenge. Uh, look at New Hampshire's found a way to open up. We've got uh, Rhode Island. All of our New England states are finally rolling out uh, some strategies on, on and giving information onto into their businesses on how to open up. Massachusetts can't be the only state in the Northeast that doesn't know how to open up. Um, it's time to trust business owners and let them figure it out. Uh, tell them what they need to do, and then get out of the way and let them go do it. How come there was only three state reps that signed your thing? It was you, the guy from DeCoste, I think his name is, from uh, the South Shore, and you had one more on. Who was the third? Uh, Allison Sullivan. Where was the rest of the state Republicans in the state Senate and the state House? Yeah, I think there's a couple more that uh, are, are probably on board. Actually, I think it's probably more than a few more. Uh, I think there's actually a pretty broad group of Republican legislators that agree. The, the challenge is... is um, I think people feel like they're they're worried about jeopardizing their relationship with the governor if they come out and say that they disagree with the pace that he's opening up. And it's listen, disgusting. I I got a good relationship with the governor. I'm glad that he and I can talk about issues that are important. But you know, just like with a lot of my friends, I disagree with him on this on, on the approach he's taking. I think he needs to speed it up. It's okay so to say that you disagree. Dean Tran not wanting to piss off to stay in the good graces of the governor. That's what we're that's what we're waiting for. Yeah, you know, I, I'm not going to speak for any individual, but I can, I, I can tell you as a whole, um, I see the text messages, I see the conversations I'm having with my fellow uh, uh, Republican legislators, and they are frustrated that Massachusetts isn't open. They're hearing like I am. Their small business owners are screaming that every day that they're shut down, they're losing money that may never come back and their business may never come back. They're getting calls from their constituents who want to work, who don't want to get checks from the state for unemployment that just want to provide from their families. Um, so we're all hearing it. Uh, and then we look to New Hampshire, Rhode Island. I mean, I have, I have a buddy who's got a, a haircut scheduled in New Hampshire, I think tomorrow. Um, so, you know, if, if New Hampshire can figure out how to have their barbershops open, I got to think Massachusetts business owners can probably figure out how to do it yeah. safely, right? Yeah, it's, it, <laughs> it is Sharp. amazing, right? New Hampshire can cut hair, Rhode Island, but Massachusetts can't because our tyrannical governor hasn't given them their blessing. I can't wait till Monday. Mark Lombardo, keep keep up the fight, man. I know you're outnumbered, but you are on the right side of history. I don't know when that day is going to come. Again, six months, six years, or 50 years from now, they're going to look back at people like you and us and say, we were right. These people were wrong. It's it's become clear. If Governor Baker doesn't allow you know most businesses to open Monday, we're going to have a little revolt on our hands. We'll have you back on because I think – there's going to be more than a few Shelley Luthers uh, who open up and say, you know, uh, Baker be damned. We got to, we got to uh, support our family. It's going to be interesting, but we'll talk to you again, hopefully next week when this all happens. That sounds good guys. Have a good day. Thanks Mark. That is Mark Lombardo. Uh, I always talk about how I grew up around here, just being outnumbered in, in fights, whether it was in high school or college, anytime we argued politics, I was always a right wing zealot. I was at UMass. It'd be 20 to one, you know, arguing about whatever Reagan in the dorm. That's how, that's how you, that's how you your skills. I got a visual of you sitting in Southwest in the quad down there and just yep, debating throw. about Reagan. Oh, yes, and I'd be defending. They all thought he was the devil because that's what you're supposed to think when you go to UMass or right, or go up around here. That's Mark Lombardo. That's why he's so good because he's yeah. his skills have been sharpened by the fights where he's outnumbered Jerry, mostly first, by idiots. My first year at UMass was the year that uh, George Bush won the contested election, and he, you know that election got a lot of you know outrage and whatever. You didn't even notice it. You didn't notice it. I feel like the political climate on campuses today is completely different. From when we were in college, it's not. I was there, Turtle Boy, when Reagan got shot, and they were people celebrating. I'm oh. not kidding. People celebrating, hoping he wouldn't pull through. But uh, that was a long time ago. We are watching. I think we're watching history kind of unfold before our eyes. And you know, they'll teach it in schools. They'll teach the liberal version, and you'll find you'll find out Rachel Levine and Andrew Cuomo were the real heroes of this pandemic. But you know, some people will deal in facts, and the fact is that we know how to go back to work, open businesses, and protect the vulnerable, protect the elderly. It's disappointing, Charlie Baker and you know Andrew Cuomo and Mark Wolf or Tom Wolf, whatever your name is in Pennsylvania, 
we don't need you anymore. All right. We need haircuts. You know, we need restaurants. We need construction. We need roofers and pavers. We don't need you. All right. We got our, we, you know, people have their own mommies and daddies. They don't need you. You're not our daddy. Get out of the friggin' way and let people go back to work. It is just so frustrating. I can't wait till Monday. I'm telling you right now, we're going to have the names and the faces and we're going to have the stories of the heroes who tell Charlie Baker to suck it and open their businesses up uh, and, and, and face the consequences. Just like Rick Savage in Maine and Shelley Luther in Dallas, we're going to have people in Massachusetts who do that and they're right. He's wrong. They're, they're the ones, they're the Americans. This is the American way to do they don't want their, they don't have their palms out saying, give me an extra $600 and let me stay home and watch Netflix. They want to work. They have, they want to show their kids, you know, that uh, this is how it's done. We don't just sit inside with our masks on, washing our hands and saying, please tell me when it's okay to go outside. Enough. Yeah, but that's, don't, you think it's, don't you think it's kind of fucked up that we sit here and we wait for those people to have to have those reactions? Like the Wachusett Country Club. She was scared shitless to do that because she knows there's going to be retribution for her. Right? Don't you think on Monday, it? It's a good that? point, but they've seen it. What she did worked. What she oh. did forced the hand of the governor. Well, you just, you just said the show that work. Governor Baker is going to go after them when they do this, right? So they're scared shitless to do it. So not only, not only they want to open, they're probably willing to open and rip up cease and desist letters. But they're scared for the retribution, and we don't have elected leaders. Like I would have loved Lombardo to come on here and be like, "On Monday, this is what you should do." Now he has to play political; okay. he has to play politics too. But I would have loved. I want to hear elected officials have balls. No, I think, think I think you got it backwards though. The, the the private sector people, the hair salon, whatever, the construction guy leads the way. Lombardo will support him. That's how it's going to work. By the way, if you tweet out my rant that I just went on, do you think Ann Coulter will retweet it? Maybe. Maybe Donald Trump Jr. Sure. I don't think. Uh, I think check check uh, Portnoy's numbers now. He's got to be over like two hundred thousand likes, and he's going to get retweeted by the president. Um, has Reamer checked in at all? Because we did a little uh, transgender talk, and uh, that gets him going. Has Reamer checked in this morning? I haven't seen anything out of Alex yeah. Reamer this yeah. morning. No. I have to say that was quite a quite a moment the other day when you called in Turtle Boy and Alex. I had no idea he hated me that much. I, I, before I even said anything. I didn't either. Before he's like, Turtle Boy, he's like, oh, fuck. Did you, know, you, like, have you blogged about him in the past? I've like, I mean, a, a couple times, you know, the, the, the piss ant thing. I wasn't even that bad. I kind of agree with him on that one. That's the thing. It's like, I, I'm a free speech guy. So I'm like, good. Call, you shouldn't be fired for calling this, you know, millionaire's kid a piss ant. If she's being a piss ant, who cares? Uh, I thought that whole thing was over. So I thought he'd be kind of cool. But man. Man, I was not expecting that. He, because here's the thing, Reamer. He said it in there. He's like, I was, I'm, he's some substitute teacher. I was on the morning drive in. I was, you did nothing. You came on. Literally anybody could have been the third wheel with Kirk and Callahan, which is an established entity. Literally anybody. You were just the token guy who was willing to get up that early in the morning and go there. You're nothing. You're nobody. I built something. I bring an audience. You see the numbers today. There's 40 people who are watching Alex. There's hundreds of people every time I'm on there. Give me a Alex Reamer is nothing. I, he knows that he's threatened by me. I and disagree. I, Alex is, I like Alex. That's why I have him on here because he's, he's not afraid. He's not afraid. Turtle boy. We had lots of liberals on the old show and we'd have fights and most of them ran and hid and they won't, you know, like uh, you know, Trenny doesn't want to do this anymore. And, and uh, Tomasi doesn't want to do it. Reamer's not afraid. He'll go, he'll fight. Um, Anybody, anytime. He, didn't, he took a walk around his bedroom. He didn't storm off. He came back. He, I didn't know he hated you that much, but I do think, for whatever reason, the whole subject of transgender, whatever, uh, track stars or tra uh, runners, that that gets him gets under his skin, and he didn't handle it well. But you know, he just hates you. What can I say? He hates your guts. I mean, he he hates people who build. It's not exactly own. a new thing for you to deal with, Turtle Boy. I think you're hated by probably ninety percent of people. Yeah, but I thought not as many as hate Alex. <laughs> Alex is supposed to be the liberal that's like easy to get along with. He can match. Like a lot of liberals couldn't come on your show. Trenny can't do it. I thought he was the guy that could you could get along with the other side, even though you know shit, we could crap on each other back and forth. He gets but, along with me, he just doesn't yeah, get along with you. And it's you, you're the problem. What did I do to him? What did I ever do to him? I don't know. That's what I don't know, but there was something. I'll, I'll bet you when we talked to him again, there was something you wrote or something. Um, he doesn't like. I mean, you've mocked these transgender kids before. It pisses him off. He's not transgender. He's gay. 
that's what I, I always ask. What do you have to do with them? What's, why is your fight their fight? But I guess he feels like they, they're both like marginalized citizens and he's written a lot about it. He's thought a lot about it. We've fought about it many times, but, uh, it's too bad. Maybe we could have got him on today to defend uh, Rachel Levine, this monster. Not, I'm not talking oh, physically. Jerry. This monster who has killed old people. That's the thing. Yeah, right. just read in conspiracy theories, Jerry, right. from QAnon. All right. I want to talk more about the Lawrence Mayer because you blogged about it. and We talked about it with Lamarck Lombardo, but people really have to hear the details of that. I did not know he was on the governor's task force. That is amazing. And... If you have any questions left about the pandemic and you're still wondering if you haven't really read up and paid attention the way I have or Turtle Boy has, CNN has a, a panel, I believe tonight, a town hall with a panel of experts. We are guaranteed these are real experts. We're going to know everything there is to know about the pandemic after we uh, watch this show on CNN tonight. But first, let me tell you about Shea Concrete. Shea Concrete's a fourth generation owned and operated business working hard day in and day out to be your trusted precast concrete partner. And you know what that means? They're working today. They're working now. They're there on this nice spring day to take of your, care of your precast concrete needs. They're a local company, but they're all over New England. Four state-of-the-art facilities all over the place. You can go visit any of them, or you can go online and check out shakeconcrete.com. If you're a contractor and you get a little downtime because the town or the city won't let you do a job, that you're ready to do, here's what you can do. Crazy, tyrannical. Uh, don't listen to that guy. Listen to me. Oh. You, can, you can call Shea, and they, like, they can show you some of the products they can deliver to your job site ready for installation, like tomorrow. Wait. You can get water and wastewater products. You can get berries and bullards, deck footings, electrical and communication products. The list goes on and on. It's not just uh, you know concrete blocks. They can do lots more than that. These guys can do it all. If you're an engineer, Shea can help you design your next project. Give them a call for more information or for an estimate or just to ask some questions. I know you got some questions. Call them, Shea Concrete, or log on to SheaConcrete.com. Do it today and ask for a hat, really cool hats. But um, uh, Lawrence Mayer, his name is Dan Rivera. Turtle Boy, let me get your blog up here in front of me. I want to make sure it's it's a good one. You've you've been on a roll. You had your uh, you, this is fertile ground for you, and it's going to continue to be. I can feel it. There's going to be a couple of Turtle Boy blogs in the next week about these heroes, these hair cutters, and these restaurant owners who say, "Screw you, Charlie Faker. We're going back to work." And Turtle Boy will have all the info if you want. It. You might not. You certainly won't read about them in the Globe. Not that anyone reads the Globe. I don't know where else. You'd read about them, but TB Daily News is the place to go. Yesterday, you would have written, uh, read about Lawrence Mayor Dan Rivera. Let me see if I can get that up in front of me. He is uh, a, uh, what do you call him, morbidly obese? Oh, yeah. Individual oh, yeah. He's a- who oversees the worst city in terms of drugs and crime and immigration violations in Massachusetts, one of the worst in New England, one of the worst in the country. It's the fentanyl capital. Everyone knows that. Hell, New Hampshire officials have pointed it out that this is where their dealers, their druggies get their their product in Lawrence. This is where if you want to get some fentanyl and OD and die is the place to go. Uh, this guy, while this doesn't enforce any immigration laws and you know they're pretty lax on the drug laws, uh, if you go outside without a mask, you are in big trouble. They have a mask what do they call it? The mask prevention patrol or something? Something really. Mask enforcement patrol. That's what mask it's enforcement it's patrol. I'm Again, yeah. I'm sure the cops think it's silly. The cops are busy dealing with gangs and MS-13. And now this idiot mayor wants them to go out and bust people who aren't properly wearing their mask and fine them $300. I mean, Jerry, the, what's forgotten in this, and it's I'm surprised right-wingers aren't pushing it more, is that the these outbreaks are happening in cities with a high concentration of undocumented immigrants, Jerry. There is a lot of people in these cities who have no paperwork, who are not here on, on, on the books. We don't know who they are because they didn't come here legally, of course. And they are the more people you have in an area like that, undocumented, the more likely they are to catch and spread the disease. And of course, Lawrence is a uh, what's it, sanctuary city. So sanctuary city. Federal laws magically don't apply there. So they can essentially, you know, be here illegally. So that they're not interested in enforcing, you know, real 
laws in Florence. They're interested in enforcing imaginary laws, which are really just orders, which have no teeth to them whatsoever, and haven't passed constitutional review. Uh, and when they have gone in front of courts, by the way, you see in Wisconsin yesterday, they said the lockdown's right. illegal. Yeah. Tell me this. If you get fined for having no mask or for not being the proper distance, and they literally give you a fine of $300, $500, are you, aren't you going to challenge it? I mean, I could literally give you a stack of data right here on my, you know, log on Google of uh, uh, people, doctors, experts saying that that mask doesn't help. Like you could say here, your honor, I have proof and uh, God knows this doctor knows this better than that idiot mayor, wherever you are. I mean, won't these, I mean, I guess it depends on the judge, but if you challenge these things, challenge people getting like ticket citations for like running on the beach, walking on the beach, are they really going to pay those or are they going to no, win I, that? The guys from Chicopee in that bar the other day, I spoke with one of them yesterday. I'm having them on the live show tonight. He's not paying it. They're not, they're not paying the fine and good for them. I would not, you, you don't have to pay it. What are they going to do if you don't pay it? It's not enforceable. Uh, it, it would seem that way, but uh, um, here's what the mayor, and this is amazing. The mayor says, this is a serious matter. Uh, not since the Civil War have we had this level of crisis across our nation. So starting Friday, our police officers will be conducting enforcement patrols regularly. These are policemen in the most drug-addled city in New England. Gangs, guns, uh, uh, fentanyl. And he wants the policemen to have regular enforcement patrols to make sure people are wearing masks. I got news for you. Most of the people, or not most, many of the people aren't going to get the word. They're not even going to know. They don't even know there's a coronavirus. They're in, you know, they're in a fentanyl haze, a heroin haze. Cops are going to go up and say, write them a ticket if they don't have a mask on. <laughs> oh my God. Like I said, good. I, I swear to God, I'm going to do a slum sociable today. I'm going to drive through Worcester, Mean South and stuff like that. And I'm just going to see how many people are wearing masks and how many people are not. And I have a good feeling that many, many, many people are not going to be wearing masks. And guess what? The Worcester police aren't going to freaking enforce it. I mean, I was a teacher, Jerry, for many years and cell phones was the battle we could not win with kids. You cannot stop kids from texting. It was literally impossible. They're too sneaky. And so eventually we kind of just gave up. I hate to say we just gave up. And that's what's going to happen with masks. Cops are just going to be like, I can't enforce this. How, like, how am I supposed to enforce this? I'm not doing this. There's a pain in my ass. I'm not doing it. And if you read up, they don't help. They don't matter. We're in a mask. And by the way, a month ago, Dr. Fauci, the sainted one, was telling you not to wear a mask. A month ago, he was telling you they don't matter. They don't help. So it's 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 debatable. It just makes people feel better. That's all. It makes the government, the governors, the mayors feel like they're in control. If they see people wearing masks, they like, you know, look at them. They're listening to me. And it makes people feel better. I mean, you see yesterday, the uh, president, he's still sits around a room with all these governors and, and uh, senators or wherever uh, around a round table and they're all wearing masks and he's not, he still won't do it. He refuses. And uh, hopefully, you know, it won't matter, but uh, he doesn't set a great example. You know, no. neither. the people are turning on Fauci too. We, 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 we yeah. like Fauci for a while. And now, I mean, Portnoy made that video yesterday. He's an influencer. Tucker, uh, Tucker's turned on him. Rand Paul's had quite enough. And uh, I think people are starting to realize that, wait a minute, we never elected this guy to anything. Why are we letting him control policy? All he says is close down indefinitely. Yeah, that's all he cares about. And I, I think it should be simple to understand that you can respect him and like him and say, yeah, he's an epidemiologist. He has no, he, he doesn't care about the economy. He doesn't care about schools. He only cares about the virus. So you listen to him. You know what you do? You have him in the meetings. You have him on the task force. You listen what he says and then you ignore it you say okay thanks doctor you can go now that's what you do you, you patronize him you pat him on the head and say thank you we got all we need to know about the virus we need to get the country back to work he literally doesn't think you know people should go back to school ever he doesn't think we should ever shake hands again he's got all these nutty theories and yet people now that trump has turned on him people love him even more fauci matters even more but you're right Portnoy's turned on him. Tucker's turned on him. A lot of the big influences have. He's become a flashpoint. All the, you know, the Democrats are going to love him. All the Republicans are going to hate him. Rand Paul. And last I heard, we were supposed to listen to the doctors, right? Rand Paul, yeah, Dr. Rand Paul just savaged him the other day. And it was great to see because 
people are afraid. You know, it's like one of these untouchables, these, these, uh, you know, these anointed ones. You're not supposed to criticize Fauci. I like the fact that we're actually criticizing some of what he says now. It's about time. You don't let an, an 80 year old epidemiologist make your economic policy for the, the greatest nation in the history of the earth. It's just nuts. But speak, I think, you know, Fauci, you know, he's okay. He knows his stuff about viruses, but what the real experts are going to speak tonight on CNN. Is it tonight? Do I have the time and the date correct? For the, tonight, the, the, can I, don't I, let it, oh, the big reveal. I don't don't want to. let it ever be said the CNN is not a serious news network. I mean, they had Brian Steltler, who weeps himself to sleep at night, say the other day he cannot believe how obsessed Fox News is with this Russia story. <laughs> <laughs> conspiracy theory. Three years. They they everything they don't like is a conspiracy theory. Three right? years of CNN and MSNBC advancing this insane conspiracy theory that that Trump was a Putin oh, yeah, puppet. Russian. It gets totally debunked. We found out that you know Adam Schiff and Nadler and Maddow and they've were all been lying to us for three years. We find out the other day that it's all one big lie. And Steltler says, "What? Well, can you believe how obsessed they are with it?" <laughs> it's just like. Why don't they get back? And yesterday he gave uh, Obama credit because Obama didn't want to talk about Obamagate. He wanted to talk about the pandemic. Can you believe that? What are the odds? He didn't want to talk about it. It's scandal. Stelter, Stelter said it's refreshing that some uh, prominent public official wants to get back to the pandemic. Might be because Obama got caught. This is going to be great TV watching during this pandemic. When you had enough Fauci, you can watch... Uh, the scandal, the biggest scandal, political scandal in U.S. history, unfold before our eyes. I got to say, it's it's going to get CNN's good. CNN's expert on what this, CNN like they don't like conspiracy theories. So who's their expert tonight on the? Uh, well, campaign? we got uh, a former HHS secretary. That's one former CDC director, okay. Doctor Sanjay Gupta. There, the oh yeah, the yeah. Guy. and and the star of the panel, Greta Thunberg. A child, a truant, a 17-year-old truant from Sweden yeah. will be on this panel telling U.S. industries, you know, like she'll be there telling all the CEOs and the and the union leaders and the small business people in this country when it will be safe to go back to work. Greta Can Thunberg. Can even do his show tonight? I feel like he has to react to that. I mean, he's on at the same time. You check that for me, Dave. What time yeah, is yeah. that? Yeah, they're both at eight. I feel like how can Tucker yep. not react to that? Yeah, Tucker should have a live look in at yeah. Greta Thunberg. And it, it, the, I mean, there are lots of offshoots of the pandemic that will last lifetimes. And again, things we've learned, things we've learned about our leaders and our economy. And I think first and foremost will be people have lost trust in certain federal officials, didn't you always have a sense that if something like this was on the horizon, that we would be protected by the really smart, highly paid people in DC and these, and these various NIHs and CDCs that they would know if a, if a virus was, you know, 10,000 miles away, that it might come here and they would be ready. Instead, oh, yeah. we see people like uh, Fauci and Burks and, and Jerome Adams a month ago saying, eh, it's, or two months ago now, saying no big deal. Fauci in March said you should go, if you have a ticket to a cruise, you should go on a cruise. In March. In March. Expert. So I think we Expert. know that these people, these smart people who are making these big decisions and setting, they're not that smart. That's what we've learned above all else, that they're not that smart. They're Another smart. thing I think. This virus, why are people acting like they're an expert on the virus? Nobody knew anything about the virus. All of their predictions about it were, were wrong. Like that's why when they say, you know, Trump was late, it doesn't matter. Everybody was late. Trump wasn't nearly as late as other people. God knows he wasn't as late as Cuomo or de Blasio or Pelosi or Fauci, but he was late. You know, the as he likes to point out that that ban on flights from China was pretty early. That was January 31st. There was like no dead. There was like 15 cases in the whole country at that point. He was much early, or I should say less late than so many others. But anyway, it's a stupid argument. I'm so tired of it. I'm so tired of listening to Trump talk about it. But another thing, a positive offshoot of this is, are we going to be done with this climate change, you know, hysteria? Are we done with that? At least for what? Well, you know, the grocery stores give me plastic again. Thank God. That's, I don't true. That's, 
<laughs> I love that because it no longer matters, by the way. Uh, I mean, the fact that climate change was considered like a serious problem is the sign of a healthy economy. If, you're, if your world is so good and your life is so comfortable that the biggest thing you have to fear is rising sea levels, then you're pretty goddamn safe. I think right. that's a problem. Really took that yeah. seriously, except, I mean, I, I guess if you're taking your advice from a child who doesn't go to school in Sweden, true, uh, I that. I like it's guided by definition. But I think when this, when we're over this, or you know, uh, whenever that is, three months, six months, when we're the path, it's in the past. I think when people start screaming, idiots like Ed Markey start screaming about climate change, you're going to say, give it a rest. You know, we've been through a real national emergency. We've survived. You know, let us just go back to normal. Leave us alone. Mm. Um, another good sign, I think, was Joe Biden named AOC to his uh, uh, campaign committee. She's the expert on climate change. Uh, that that um, uh Absolute moron. That dummy is on Joe Biden's campaign committee, which is a sign of Biden being absolutely lost in the wilderness, looking to shore up his fringe support among radical nut jobs. So he brings that dummy on to talk to uh, to talk to him about climate change and, by the way, to campaign for him, which is a gift to Donald J. Trump. He also has uh, John Kerry on the committee. So he's picking some winners. Biden is. AOC. The fact that she's attaching herself to the room, she's done nothing but crap on this guy for like the last year, racist, blah, blah, blah. Now she has to accept it because ultimately, as much of a fighter as she pretends to be, she knows how to get in line. She knows how to be, to, to, not, to stay in the good favors of Nancy Pelosi and she no longer believes women. You talked about the biggest 2020 story of the year. In my opinion, the one that pisses me off more than all of this is just the widespread, all of a sudden from Democrats, that Tara Reid is a filthy, dirty, lying Russian whore. That's the biggest one. After that's they also <laughs> a, a good point. Is the death of the Me Too movement? The Me Too movement is dead, defunct. I mean, all the leaders turned out to be hypocrites and liars. They all were frauds when they said believe women, you know, take women seriously. They didn't mean it. They meant believe women, except when they're accusing a Democrat. So Ooh. there's a list. I forget who put it out. I think it was Daily. Uh, I forget Daily Call or one of those of the. I think it's like a hundred hypocrites, uh, all politicians yeah. and celebrities and actors and singers who supported uh, that liar, Christine Blasey Ford, and attacked Kavanaugh and absolutely flipped flipped the script now that, that uh, Biden is credibly accused. So I think those were the leaders of the Me Too movement. They were the Me Too movement. Right now, the Me Too movement is one person, Rose McGowan. She's the only one who's been consistent. Uh, she's a little nutty, but she has... Uh, pointed out the hypocrisy of these these other women all the you know Alyssa milano's out there so that's another good thing it it exposed those hypocrites and it exposed the uh, you know the, the insanity of listening to a, a, a teenager from sweden as we sit there and worry about the fate of the earth but we'll get to listen to her one more night tonight is she a small business owner has she been affected by this is this she what is she a small business owner, Greta? I don't think, well, maybe. Yeah, she probably, she probably has millions. This has to affect her speaking fees. I mean, she can't do any big... I assume that's how she makes her money, right? Going and speaking yeah, in front she of wins awards. You know, she wins big awards. You know, those might come with money. She, she doesn't go to school. Like, right? I don't know. How, I don't know if she's going to go to college. She never went to high school. No, but too, no she's a big star. And, and, you know, good for her. That's going to be... Uh, it's going to be really enlightening. I'll probably be watching Tucker. I'll have to tape it. But you're right. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe Tucker will have to have a little live look. Lisa, in at Lisa Bloom Allen. was the best one, as people are pointing in the comments. She literally came out and said, oh, I believe he raped you. However, Donald right. raped 20 people. So I'm go I have to vote for Joe. There's, uh, there's a few of those. Lisa Bloom, the guy who founded Politico, another guy who said that, yeah, you know, Biden probably did it, but he's better than Trump. Uh, but you know what? I don't want it to be too damaging because I don't want him to have to, uh, even this revelation that he was unmasking General Flynn, he got caught, he lied to Stephanopoulos, he's in it up to his eyeballs. It's a huge scandal. I don't want it to be so huge that Biden has to step down or Biden gets taken away in handcuffs because I want the Trump-Biden debates. I want that's going to be the most entertaining thing of the summer, the hell with sports. You really think baseball you know, is going to be as entertaining as Trump versus Biden. No chance. No, 
nobody likes baseball anyway. <laughs> Our team is so unlikable. It's like <laughs> true. Nobody, it is. No, it's the one thing nobody. Are, I, I don't are think anyone. Are we getting football? That's all they care about. And literally, yeah. nobody talks about like, are the Red Sox going to play? Because I really want to. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> and I think it doesn't matter. Uh, it's too late to save WEI. Forget it. It's oh over. Oh my God! Did you see Dale's ratings? I, I saw a, them all, and it's three. disaster. It's the worst they've ever had, and I don't think they're going to get any better anytime soon. There's no. You know, block me on Twitter. My first, he popped my cherry. Who did? Dale. Dale popped my Twitter block cherry. He uh, was the first person to block my new account when I got back on. I thought really? it was Jen Royal, but it turned out to be Dale because I retweeted him uh, going to Jen Royal's restaurant. And I said that uh, it, it's amazing that somebody with such low ratings can afford to eat out at such an expensive restaurant. Uh, but it's just like, it doesn't matter. He's the perfect example of like, you don't have to produce anything. And you will stay on the air so long as you don't piss off a transgender activist. Right, right. Well, I don't know how much longer that's going to last, but uh, good luck to him. There'll be that guy in Pennsylvania, by the way. They probably never find his body. The guy who called the transgender woman, sir, Marty Griffin. R.I.P. Rest in peace, Marty Griffin. But uh, all right, Turtle Boy, two appearances this week. You were Three. Thanks. Three appearances. Oh, yeah, hey, that's right. Yeah, we didn't call. get Alex to call today. We we're hoping Alex might call and check in, but uh, I don't think he wants to play. He doesn't uh, He doesn't like you. That's pretty clear, but that's okay. We do good job on the blog this week. Some interesting stuff. Keep up with Turtle Boy at tbdailynews.com. You can follow him on Twitter too, but he's. I promise you, I don't know who it's going to be, but you're going to see a profile in courage. That's what it's going to be, a profile in courage, because Turtle Boy is going to write about some small business person, or maybe a few, who open up against the will, against the orders of our tyrannical governor on Monday. I can't wait to see it. I hope it's a hope it's my friend, the haircutter. I hope it's Mike, the haircutter, because I need a haircut. But it and it might be, it might be. He's pretty pissed. But I think there'll be a group of them. We'll see what the state does. I'm sure Charlie's a vindictive man. He, I'm sure he'll try to to ruin them, just the way the uh, governor of Maine has tried to ruin. Uh, Rick Savage, the restaurant guy. That's going to happen in mass. I look forward to it. We will be all over it. I promise you that. But uh, thanks, Turtle Boy, and thanks to Shake Concrete. Thanks to Allied Paving. They can't wait to get back to work. Hopefully, they'll be able to get back to work on Monday. Thanks to our friends at DCU. Thanks, to everyone, for listening, rating, reviewing. Go to Apple Podcasts. You can find it. You can give us a little star, one star, four star. I don't care. Give us a star. A lot of the trend right now in the reviews is to rank all the guests, and Turtle Boy is not looking good in those uh, ranks. Okay, so Turtle Boy, right, get on there. Go on the Jerry Callahan Facebook page. Oh, now he's going to ruin no, it. Oh, not the Facebook page. It's the Apple Podcast Review is where all the rankings okay, are. Go on the Apple Podcast yeah. Review and be honest. Dude, don't If you don't think I'm number one, don't say it, but rank and do it and because he, he's stacking the deck. Not only, not only are you not number one, this guy on the latest, one of the latest reviews, he put you at number 739. That's how bad he mafia. This is all this is. This is a uh, stack in the deck. This is obviously orchestrated. So get in there, Turtle Riders. Do your thing. Uh, you can do that. I appreciate it. This is the Callahan Podcast. I'm Jerry Callahan. We will talk to you again tomorrow. Okay.